Let's first consider a piece of material like a rectangular beam to which a tensile force is applied. At a cross section in the material, the forces try to pull the structure apart, but the material itself counteracts these forces. As a result of this mechanism, a stress is present in the material. The stress at the cross section can be calculated by dividing the force by the cross sectional area. Note that this is considered a normal stress since the force works perpendicular to the cross section. Now that we've defined normal stresses in a rectangular beam, let's evaluate the main stress directions in a piece of pipe. In a pipe, the normal stresses are based on the cylindrical coordinates. First, there's the axial stress resulting from forces in the axial direction applied to the pipe. Secondly, there's radial so stresses resulting from forces in the radial direction. And finally there are circumferential stresses, so in the circumferential direction of the cylinder. These three stresses are the orthogonal stress directions in piping, in other words the normal stress directions. In piping disciplines the circumferential direction is often referred to as the hoop direction. Let's take a closer look at each normal stress, starting with the axial one. Axial loads on a pipe are obviously applied to the outer pipe wall. Similar to the rectangular beam, a cross section can be made perpendicular to the loads. The applied force tends to pull the pipe apart, but again the material counteracts these forces. The stress is calculated by dividing the force by the area and for the axial direction, the area is that of the cross section shown, so the pipe wall. We continue with the hoop stress. To capture this stress, we need to take a cross section in the axial direction of the pipe, which basically cuts the pipe in half. Now any force applied perpendicular to our cross section causes a hoop stress. An example is the pressure that works on the inner surface of the pipe wall. The force components perpendicular to the plane try to pull the pipe apart, but the material counteracts these forces, which forms the hoop stress. As long as the pressure is not excessive, both will be in equilibrium. To calculate the hoop stresses, we again divide the force values that have to be counteracted by the area of the cross section in the material. Finally, let's take a closer look at the radial stress, for which we zoom into a small piece of the pipe wall. The internal pressure acts in the radial direction on the inner pipe wall, as does the ambient pressure on the pipe outside wall. For the radial direction in a pipe piece, the material is typically in a compressive state, which it will have to resist. Next to the three normal stresses, we also need to evaluate shear stresses. Where normal stresses act perpendicular to surfaces, thereby stretching or compressing the structure, shear stresses act parallel to the surface, thereby deforming the structure. For a pipe piece, the relevant shear stress is the torsion stress, which tends to twist the pipe in opposite directions. Now it is important to note that the radial stress is often neglected in thin wall piping. As long as the inner diameter and the outer diameter are roughly the same, or in other words, their ratio is close to one, a pipe is considered to be a thin wall pipe and radial stresses are often neglected. We end up with three main stresses in a piece of piping, the axial, hoop and torsion stress. Mm -hmm.